Welcome, welcome to this evening. Um, eventually this video will be put on our uh, Facebook page. So probably better for you guys all to have your videos off. If you wanna ask questions, um, there'll be a time for that and then you can just pop them into the chat box. And uh, so welcome to this evening's um, topic and webinar about how to mm, develop your intuition, why we should develop our intuition, what really is intuition and how that it will really transform your life. Uh, if of course we were interactive, I would interact with you guys just a little bit, but um, let's start with that. Let's uh, start by you, um, what, what brought you here this evening? You know, you can just pop one word into the chat box. What is your, is it curiosity? Is it, you have a burning question? Is it you want to learn how to develop it more? Um, just what was your intention or what drove you to um, hop online this evening? Um, and that will, uh, I'll incorporate that into what I talk about. And yeah, so you can just put that in the chat box. I will be muting everybody just so we don't have interruptions. So um, I'm waiting for people to pop in the chat, but I don't see anything coming in. Okay, I got it. I, I see you, Damien, thank you. I'm always making the wrong choice. I want to speak to my spirit guides, working on how to work with my intuition. Okay, I'm doing clarity. Yeah, and so as I see those come more and more in, everything, learning how to trust it, trust yourself, intentionally hearing God's voice. Um, yeah, and basically everything that you guys are saying is, is really why we do want to um, develop our intuition. I mean, there's a difference between a gut feeling, yes, and really understanding. This is the classic one. I'll get, I'll get more into details in a moment. Attracting the wrong energy, right? So wanting to learn how to develop the intuition to attract better energy, I would say. You want to know if it's real. Okay. So learning how to develop our intuition. Number one, intuition is something that we all have. So it's not necessarily something that you have to learn or that you gain from the outside world or that you go out and you um, find a way to make it happen on the outside. It's really something that we all have. It is our innate, inborn ability um, to have this higher knowing, you can call it extra knowing, higher knowing. Um, it's something that is within. So really what we're doing when I say learn how to develop it, you can say that what we're doing is we're sort of releasing and clearing off some layers that make it hard for us to connect to it, to feel it or see it and to trust it. So it's not necessarily that we are going out there and learning it. We're just actually releasing what blocks us, you could say blocks us, from connecting more deeply to it. And why do we want to do this? Well, as many of you have put in the chat that, you know, life can be very interesting sometimes. And besides knowing how to make decisions or finding out how to make better decisions, um, we, a lot of people feel lost in life sometimes. You don't know where you're going. Why are you here? Why are you in the job you're in? Why are you in the relationship you're in? Why are you in the country that you're in? Why are you doing certain things? After a certain time in life, and I would say a little bit after teenagehood, early uh, adulthood is really where we start to have a lot of questions, life questions. What do we do next? What do we do after school? Um, you know. Should I go here? Should I go there? Should I follow what my family wants? Should I do something different? That's really where all of these questions start to happen. Prior to that, we're sort of going along with whatever's set for us. We don't really fuss that much, not as much as when we start to get in our young adulthood and we have our face with all these sort of questions coming in. Um, and that's why when we, when we learn to develop this intuition or when we learn how to connect more with ourself, those questions are milder. Those questions are softer. 
those questions don't really um, come out as mistakes necessarily or uh, very, very, very huge life-changing things. It's sort of like when we start to connect more deeply to ourselves, when we start to connect more deeply to mm, our higher self, our soul self, our intuition, there is, a, there is a calmness that comes with that. There's a calmness that comes with how we go through our life. So we can go through our life, you know, like this, and we can go through our life like this. And of course, there's a lot of factors that come into play on, on how one person goes through life like this and how one person goes through life like this. And one of those factors I can say is that trust, that trust in self and that trust in life. And trust in self, trust in life is, this, is similar to this whole thing about intuition. I'm not, I'm not veering off. It's when we trust ourselves and when we trust life and we trust that there's a greater energy, a higher force that perhaps is guiding us, guiding our soul here in this incarnation, there's a more ease and there's a more calmness, there's a more relaxation into whatever's coming up for us in our life. That doesn't mean that we're going to make less decisions or that we're going to have less uh, hardships necessarily, but that we go through it um, with more ease and more surrender, and that the ride is less bumpy. The ride is more smooth and much more enjoyable. So what do I mean by developing this intuition? Like I said, we all have it. And I'm sure that if I saw you all or if I unmuted you all, every single one of us would, would have a story about it. Yes, I remember that one time I knew it was the wrong thing to do, but I did it and then this happened, or I knew I should have done this, or I knew I shouldn't have done this or gotten in this relationship or <laughs> et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So there, I, I'm, I'm really sure that all of you, I'm just going to make sure that everybody's muted because I do hear some sound. Okay. I'm sure that all of you have these experiences. And so it's, um, I just lost my train of thought. Let me just get it back. So I'm sure that all of you have these experiences when you knew that there was something, yet you either didn't listen to it or you weren't really sure or you weren't really clear on what it was. It's like, I, I feel something, but I don't really know. Um, so when we are able to develop that self-trust, when we are able to I would say even slow down a little bit, when we are able to acknowledge, let's just say that, when we are able to acknowledge that there is something within us, and we can call it our higher self, that is the wise one. And when we are just able to validate that and acknowledge that it's not just us against the world, us alone against the world, that there's something within us, within you, that is that wise one. And just that alone, just actually acknowledging, even when um, you're in a very, very difficult situation and in a massive difficult situation, and even just pausing for a moment and saying, but there's something else, or, I mean, and there's something else, right? There has to be something else. There has to be something more. It can't just be this, um, it, you know, just acknowledging it. I don't know what this is. I hear a sound or I feel something or there's an inner voice. I don't really know what it is, but I know that there's something. I mean, just that alone is quite powerful. You know, just that alone is quite powerful. Now, remember that that wise one or that inner voice or that higher voice of, of knowledge or intuition is within you, right? It is, is let's say this is you and, and it's right here. And we come into this world and our world or our society is not necessarily set up in most societies, not all, is not necessarily set up for us to acknowledge this, is not set up for us to know it or develop it or tune into it. 
majority. I'm generalizing. And so what happens is that when this goes unacknowledged, it just sort of gets smaller, forgotten about, left behind. And we develop these layers, and you can call them conditioning, belief systems, all of this stuff that comes with us as we go through this life. And that keeps us even further from it. So it is here. And so just by acknowledging that, wait a minute, there is something more is quite powerful. I would say that's, that's very powerful. And of course, the next step after that is discovering it. So I wouldn't necessarily call it developing, but discovering it. It's self-discovery or rediscovery. And, and that is within everyone, this little piece that wise you, the higher you, your intuition, that voice of reason, voice of knowledge is within you. And so after you acknowledge it, then of course you want to start to pay more attention to it. As you pay more attention to it, it starts to get louder. Like anything else in life, when we start to notice something, we tend to always notice it after. But sometimes we don't notice it at all. And we can go into this, we can walk into the same room over and over and over again and never notice a painting on the wall. Or walk into the same room over and over and never notice a plant in the corner until one day we notice the plant or we notice the plant. And then every single time after that we walk into the room, we can never unnotice it. It becomes part of our awareness. So it's very similar to that of our own intuition, our own higher inner voice. Once we start to acknowledge it, and we start to acknowledge it over and over, and we don't um, lessen it by saying, oh, you know, it's just my imagination, or oh, I'm crazy, or oh, it can't be that, or this is weird, or this is odd. You know, once we really start to acknowledge it and, and really not just acknowledge it in a, in a way where we're dismissing it, but acknowledge it and listen, it will be very difficult for you, for any of us to never hear it again. Of course, there are times in life where we can't hear it that much. And there's times in life we can hear it very clearly. And I'll, I'll go through a bit of those. So just going back to that fact alone, it's very powerful. Just the fact that you acknowledge it. And I want to say that is really one of the first steps, you can call it, to starting to understand what it is, listen to it, develop it, and make it more and more part of your life and your day-to-day -day decisions, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So the acknowledgement of it. So I would invite you after this evening and, and going forward in your week that whenever you hear, and it's subtle, and it comes sometimes when you least expect it. So you'll be driving the car, let's say you have a decision to make or something happens at work and you're sort of going through it over and over, uh, over and over in your mind and you're driving, you're driving to work and then you get another, either another thought an alternate thought, a soft thought. It's very subtle. Just acknowledge it. And I invite you not to question it, just for now. Yes, there is a, a way where we develop how to understand if it's really intuition or how to know or understand if it's like our emotional uh, propensity and our, and our mental thought process and other people's. Yes, there is that. But for now, I really deeply invite you all to just start to acknowledge that, hey, there's another voice here, or there's, I have another idea, or some other thought is coming in. Without the, should I trust it? Should I trust this? What should I trust? Should I trust this? Should I trust this? And then what happens is we get into this sort of anxiety ball, or this panic ball, and then that voice, or that inner knowing, that intuition, many, many different words, it just does this. And we really sort of lost that connection. So really just whatever it is for the next week or two weeks or so, just acknowledge it. And, and this, I want to say, is really an act of self-love. To not dismiss everything that comes through for you. To not dismiss what could potentially be your voice of reason or your intuition or your higher higher call your higher wisdom or your higher wiser one or your higher self it's really an act of love to self to say you know what 
there is a wise one in me. I may not yet be able to discern which of those voices or feelings, but I know that it's there. And, and, and that alone will, will help you shift. There will be a shift, just these acknowledgements. And so I wanna say that sort of the first step is to acknowledge that it is there. And I, and I see some questions coming in and I, I will pause for a moment at some point and just start answering the questions. But I, I want to acknowledge, so I want to say that's the first step. And then the second part of this is starting to develop a, a connection and a relationship to whatever it is that's coming in for you, whether that's a feeling, whether, so everybody receives intuition or intuitive information in different ways. Some may feel it, some may hear like a voice speaking, some may even see an image flash before their eyes or a little movie or a little scenario. Or in some people it may just, it may just come and they don't know how it comes. So the second part of that is to start to develop a connection to the way the information is coming in for you. And the way you do that is first, of course, by acknowledging it and just being with it. Not trying to question or analyze it or try to understand if it's true, if it's not true. Just be with it. Oh yeah, there's that voice again or there's that feeling again. Just take note that the next time you want to and for basic things, I, I, I also invite you all to, to use it for basic things that are not really, the best way to um, work with this little exercise is to do it for things that you're not super emotionally attached to. So if you're starting off developing or creating that connection to this intuition, you don't wanna start off by saying, should I marry her or him? Start off by, should I have Chinese food or Indian food? Should I cook? Should I go out? These are the, the way that you're going to start with basic things because you're not that emotionally connected to whatever you eat in, in one evening. You can have something else the next night. You know then the next moment you can have some other food. So you're not really attached to it that much. And these are ways that you can start to ask and listen and hear or feel or see something flash. And that's how you'll start to understand what it is for you, how you, number one, receive the information and how it feels or senses when you do receive. And most of the time, it's really subtle. It's really, really subtle. So um, this is why a lot of people say, well, in meditation is where you receive answers because meditation helps us pause. So I would also encourage you, and it doesn't mean you have to learn how to meditate. You don't have to learn how to meditate. There's no such thing as learning how to meditate, really. You just sit down with yourself and you allow yourself to be. The most powerful way to develop your intuition is just by allowing yourself to be. Sit in meditation, just sit yourself down for five minutes and just be. Do not try to not think because it will never happen. Don't even try to count your thoughts or sheep or breaths or just be, just allow yourself to be. And if you can do that for five minutes a day over time, after 30 days, after 21, 30, 40 days, you will start to um, get quieter. There will be a shift. I can almost sit here and guarantee that something will shift. And that's when you can start to ask questions because if people come and they're like, oh, well, I asked these questions, I sat in meditation, I got no answers. Over and over, over and over, day after day. And just allow yourself, bring questions to your meditation. Bring questions, it doesn't even call it meditation because the minute sometimes we call it meditation, we don't do it, there's a resistance. But your five minute develop, intuitive development moment, let's call it that. You guys want to develop your intuition, take five minutes of your day and just sit down with yourself so that you can start to tune in and feel what flavor are you intuitively? What is the flavor of your intuition? Because if you're continuously busy, 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 and you only come to maybe one meditation class or one workshop, and then you go out busy, 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 
it's going to be very difficult for you to start to hear it, listen to it, feel it, and develop a connection to it. So five minutes out of your day on a daily basis, if you skip days, it's fine. Five minutes, three times a week. And just be with whatever is happening. And you will see there is more to just what the mind is doing. You will start to witness and understand the mind. And then you'll start to witness, understand there's something, feels like there's more than the mind here. Um, and that's where you're going to start to develop this connection with it. So acknowledgement of it, that there's something there within voice or feeling. And then start softly, subtly, um, organically, naturally, you can say, start to develop a relationship to what that is. And it will be different for everyone. It will be different for everyone. And then you want to start to build your capacity to trust it. So if we, um, if we start off with very simple examples, like, okay, should I uh, eat this for dinner or not? Should I attend that class or not? Uh, should I go out with this friend or not? Should we, you know, you'll start to um, increase that to more, in, you know, more serious or intense questions. Um, and then you want to start to develop the trust to it. And I want to say that trusting your intuition takes time. It really takes time. Any single time that we want to trust, you know, we get into a new relationship and we're, we need, we want to trust it. It takes time to fully trust the other in relationship. Yes, we can go in trusting, but trust is built over time. We start a new job. In the beginning, there's that probation period and we're not sure, are we gonna stay? Are they gonna keep us? Are we gonna, we, there's no full trust. If you're at that job after five, seven years, or even three years, you start to develop a relaxation and trust that your job will be there the next day. It takes time. So even with yourself, trusting your intuition, which I wanna say um, is comparable to trusting yourself, right? We all want to develop a deeper trust to ourselves, and, and trusting ourselves is really where I would say the beauty of intuition um, comes in. Because once you start to understand your intuition and recognize it and start to develop this relationship with it, and you start to hear it as the voice of reason or the higher voice, and you start to experiment with it a little bit, you're going to start naturally trusting yourself more and more, more and more. Um, now I am a I am a, a psychic clairvoyant. I'm a I'm a clairvoyant. I don't really like to use the word psychic so much. I'm a clairvoyant. I'm an intuitive and I'm a clairvoyant. And I give readings to people. And I always I would encourage people to use that sort of um, modality to receive confirmation on your intuition. And, and to be honest, this is actually one of the ways that I really developed my intuition. I will um, get into my story a little bit in a moment, but you have all this intuition coming in or you have all these decisions to make, feel into it. Feel into, okay, I believe this is the right thing for me because I believe this is, I believe this is, I believe this. And then you can visit a clairvoyant or intuitive reader or any sort of reader and ask those questions and compare. Oh yeah, I knew this because most people that come to readers already know and have the answers. What we need as human beings is to be witnessed and recognized and acknowledged and validated. We, we need that in relationships. We need that at work. We need that in our families. We need that with our children. And our children need that with us. This is a, is a basic human need. And it's the same thing with intuition. Once we have that, I knew, I knew it. You know, so a reader will tell you, and you just, I knew it. I know that's the right thing for me. It helps you strengthen and develop, yes, the trust for yourself. And not only the trust for yourself, but the courage that it takes to trust yourself. Because it does take courage. It does take courage to create, make a decision and then go in all, all in on that decision. It takes courage. So you start to develop your inner strength. You start to develop your intuition. Yes. You start to develop that self-trust and your own courage. 
So I, I always um, invite people into um, whatever you're going through in life, you feel into it first. You feel into what's best for you and what's not and what you quote unquote should do or should not do. And then you can see a reader for that and just see. And also you want to experiment, you know, um, take it lightly in a sense. Not all readers that you see will, will jive with you or resonate with you or you want to experiment. It's, you're on an experimental project. You're on a research project with your intuition. You know, set it out, have that mindset that I don't know my intuition. I want to develop and I want to know it more. And these are all the ways that I'm going to start to know it more and to develop it more. It's not a one stop. That's how I do it. I'm going to, you know, apply this and done. I, I have my intuition activated. You know, a lot of people say, I want to activate my third eye because I want my intuition to come. And I'm like, okay, but practice. There's no one can give you this gift because you already have this gift. No one can give it to you. And no one should be giving that to you because you have that. It's just a matter of hearing it or feeling it or tuning into it and then developing the ability, the capacity to trust it. That's what it is. Um, and that is through practice. And that is really through practice. So, Okay, maybe I'll take some questions now. I, I wanna, I wanna, there's a, of course more that I wanna talk about. I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about my story because it's always um, nice to hear how it happened for other people. So I was someone that was very emotional, very emotional and very, very, very twisted and tied up with my emotions, especially when it came to Way back in the day, we used to call them boys, men, guys, relationships, love, matters of the heart. It would always get me. And I would always be very, very wrapped up into it and emotional. And jump to when I, and I, and I used to think things, but then I used to doubt myself. And then I used to call myself crazy. And then I would get on the phone with my friends and we would hash it out for like three, four hours. of That takes a lot of energy and time and analyze it. and and. All of that would take a lot of energy from me, would drain me, would take me away from the rest of my life, which is being present for friends and family, which is being present for my career, which is being present for myself and my self um, care and health. And it really drained a lot of energy out of me. And I was always confused. I was always conflicted. And fast forward a little bit, and I'll tell you how I got into it, but fast forward a little bit, when I started to develop my intuition, I questioned it. It's natural and normal to question it, you know? When, when nobody's ever taught us. My, my parents certainly haven't, and I know a lot of people's parents haven't. There are some uh, traditions and cultures, you know, that do, and that's beautiful. And now, it's, of course, it's changing. But I questioned it completely. I would feel in, some intuition come in, but then I would doubt it that it was just my craziness or my emotions or this, and I wouldn't really trust it until I started to learn about psychics, readers, intuitives, clairvoyants, whatever you want to call them. There's different people do it different ways, and I start and I and I really um, I found someone that I deeply trusted, and she became my teacher for many many years. And I deeply, deeply, deeply trusted her, um, her readings, her intuition. And I used to receive all my own answers or I tune in and then I would go to her and I would say, okay, this is happening. Why is this happening? I think it's because of this. I think it's because of this. And back and forth over time, sometimes I wasn't correct because it was my wishful thinking or it was my attachment to the outcomes. And a lot of times I was, and that really, really helped me develop, validate, and trust. And so sometimes we can't always do it on our own. A lot of times we, it's, we're not meant to do it on our own. Um, you know, we come to this world and we're not coming here in isolation. We come here and we have relationships and relationships help us grow and evolve and, and develop ourselves. If you never, ever had a romantic relationship, 
there is a part of yourself that you don't know because you've never had that experience. Same as skydiving. It's the same with anything. If you've never skydived before, there's a part of you that you may not know, you may not be familiar with. You may think you're super afraid of it. And then one day you go skydiving and you're able to jump out of the plane, no problem and have no fear. We don't know until we engage and then we see. So we don't know until we enter it. And so the same thing with intuition. As you go more and more into it, and as you start to, to trust it or get it validated, yes, going back to us needing help, you know, as you get it validated, we come here to have these experiences, and through experiences, we, we have relationships with different people, various people, and this is how we get to know ourselves and who we are and develop ourselves and evolve ourselves. So similar to intuition and developing it, it's fine if we have help to do that, and Personally, I can't speak for everyone, but personally, this is what helped me a lot. It's not the only thing, but it's really what helped me a lot. Of course, meditation helps a lot. Um, I took, uh, for a long, long time, I sat in development classes and courses, and that helped me incredibly because it sort of put me there. You know, I would go to this class, you know, on a weekly basis or monthly basis or this training, I would go to this, and I have to show up and I have to be in that energy. If I'm alone at home or if I'm sort of in my job and I'm, like, I'm not in that energy, and when I go and apply myself, I put myself in that energy, then that intuitive part of me starts to come up. Other people in the group or in the class are doing it. I start to do it and engage and it starts to come out. And then I start to develop that connection to it. So I really also recommend that part of your journey to developing your intuition is to classes, courses, trainings, teachers, uh, People that you know who are doing it that may not be doing it professionally, but that are practicing, um, like-minded people, all of that, everything helps. That's, that's what I'm getting at, is that everything helps. It's not just a one thing and it's done. And, and, and usually it's not like that with most things in life. So, um, so yeah. Let me go to the questions. I think it's time to go to questions because I can talk. Uh, for a very long time about this. Um, so if you guys want to start to pop in a few questions, we can go to a few questions and then I'll, I'll tell, I'll, we'll, I'll speak a little bit about other stuff and then um, I'll speak about what's happening in our next, uh, we have another webinar next week. So I'll speak about that. Okay, so questions. What is, what if you feel your intuition has not always guided you correctly? Okay. So it may not have been your intuition, okay? There's a few scenarios here. It may not have been your intuition. It may have been your attachment to something happening or your attachment to something not happening that sort of influenced you uh, making a certain decision or you being, uh, or you listening to a certain voice or feeling. And it may not have been uncorrect. Because we hear, um, yes, we all want pleasurable experiences and the best experiences for us. But sometimes, as we know, challenges is really what stretches, stretches us and helps us grow. So sometimes it may not really be what we think is the best for us. Or, you know, why is this happening to me? I don't want this. I didn't ask for this. Why is this why is this happening? I didn't want this. And it can seem like a very big struggle that you're going through and you're questioning, well, either my intuition is wrong, bad, stupid, dumb, because this can't be good for me. But on a, on a certain level, likely it is. And perhaps in retrospect, one day in the future, when you look back to that situation, you're going to understand it better. Um, we are multi-layered, multi-dimensional, and there's a lot of moving pieces in, within ourself and in our life. And sometimes we're being called to grow in a certain area and we don't want to grow. And so sometimes our intuition, quote unquote, will guide us or lead us somewhere where we need to have a certain experience for a particular reason in which you're not completely understanding, aware, or agreeing on in the moment. 
So it could be that again, I, I don't, I can't hear you really to, to understand, but um, that's what's coming through at least um, when I answer your question. And, and likely uh, I'm answering this intuitively. I'm not, I'm not saying I am, but likely I am. Likely I am. If somebody else would have answered that question, I may have had a different, a sort of different or slight different response. Um, what is it? What is, okay, I, 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 how, hold on a second. I, they're moving and I, I, I just, how can I differentiate between anxiety, impulsive, rapid thoughts, intuition? Yeah, so this is a very classic question. So the question is, how can I differentiate between anxiety or implosive and rapid thoughts versus intuition? So intuition generally is subtle. It doesn't cause um, major excitement sometimes. It, it doesn't cause, in the moment at least, it doesn't cause any major reactions. It, uh, it comes a lot of times out of nowhere. It comes a lot of times when you don't expect it. A lot of times when you don't expect it. You could have asked this question a long time back and all of a sudden you get the answer. So intuition doesn't always work when you want it to. It, it comes in, okay, when there's an opening. And that, that opening might be when you're driving your car and for a second, you're in that space of surrender or peace. Second, before you get to the red light, before somebody cuts you off, there's a second. And in that moment, your intuition can flow in as intuition. When you are thinking of something and you're very agitated by it, or you are troubled by it, or there's anxiety or confusion, likely it's not necessarily your intuition. It's not the intuitive or the higher um, answer or information that's coming in. The other thing I'm gonna keep in mind is that anything that we are emotionally attached to is going to have, we're gonna have a, a much dif more difficult time to receive intuitive answers to that difficult or that um, emotionally attached question. So should I stay with him or should I stay with her? And I, I take relationship questions because I, I work a lot with relationship stuff is a highly emotionally layered char charged question. And you're not gonna just sit and receive it like that. So um, anything that we are really emotionally attached to will, or triggered by, will likely not come very quickly, will come in its own time and the stuff that we're very emotionally charged by, attached by, the intuition comes. It comes. And sometimes it's loud and clear, but we have no desire to listen to it. No desire at all. We dismiss it or we like, I know. We know. So we all know. Whatever you guys in this moment are dealing with, you know, deep down, you know. Um, so just going back to your question, how do you know? For you, I'll, ju I'll just say that it's subtle. It's more subtle and it comes many times when you're not expecting it. So if you're demanding an answer or information to come through, likely it will not. It does not listen to demands. Um, yeah, so I'll leave it at that for, for, your, for the reply for that. Um, I hope that answers that. And you can always ask me in a different way. Um, next question. Let's say I have a heavy feeling, but how can I trust that this is my intuition speaking and not overthinking? Yeah, so similar to what I just said, overthinking is this uh, rum rumination where we're thinking about it again and again. And then when we think one thought, then it branches out into multiple thoughts and then we're off somewhere else. That's not intuition. It's not. It doesn't, ha it doesn't have that flavor. It just doesn't have that flavor. Intuition is um, soft, um, like I said, subtle, um, I would even call it a little delicate and is quite rapid. A lot of times the information or the answers that come through intuition don't sit, they don't stay. It's kind of like a wave. And if you can catch that wave, because there's a, there's a, there's an opening where you can catch that wave come through, then you got it. And sometimes it comes through and we, it's, it, it gets 
caught into our thought processes and, and it, it goes and that's fine i'll come back eventually but it really is like this thoughts come in like this and, and I'm, I'm just sort of um demonstrating in a metaphoric way thoughts come in like this usually and they stay right the energy of a thought will and then the thought that we ruminate over and then we have branches of other thoughts we, well the energy if i can um describe it with my body is more like this it's more like this that's the energy of thoughts and anxiety and rumination the energy of an intuitive information or intuitive answer or you can call it even thought is, is more like this it's sort of like this so you can think of it that way whenever you are feeling um anxious or or exactly heavy feeling and all of that um yeah all my decisions are based on fear next question and always expected the worst can this be related to intuition or my belief systems so i would say um if we always you use the word always expect the worst then i would say that it sounds like a pattern that's running and it may be running from this life perhaps another life but this always sounds to me like a pattern i'm always expecting the worst intuition even if it's news that or an information that you may not deem as um what you want to hear is not really the worst it's just information there's no good about it there's no bad about it it's a new it's neutral it's neutral it just is so i i would i would say it's more of a pattern you can call it a belief system but a pattern that may be running there um and you are identifying more with the energy of fear then the energy of um you can call it divine divinity or intuition or trust and so there i would also say that there's something there that's running you know a pattern there that you may want to look at how to learn to become psychic for myself so like i i mentioned a few things already the things that i mentioned here about um learning how to connect more with your intuition so psychic and intuition is similar in the sense that psychic really is someone that connects to extra sensory perception, who can connect to information coming through the extra sensory perceptions. So our senses, we touch, we taste, we see, we hear, we feel physical things. And when we get the we can call it psychic information or higher information or intuitive information it comes into those same senses but in an extra sensory way so it's subtle we hear some voice but there's nobody actually physically talking to us we see a movie or an image of a giraffe but there's no giraffe in front of us so those are usually the ways that our information comes through and um you start to develop it by there's a, many ways, but some of the ways I just mentioned here, acknowledging it, then developing a connection to it, making room for it, taking those five minutes a day out of your day to develop it, get into a class, into a course. I do have a training and I will talk about that um, in a little bit when we're getting to the end of this. Um, find a way that you can develop for yourself because everyone will develop it develop it in their own way they'll find their own way to develop it some people want to go to a training and become readers some people don't want that some people will develop it through meditation through maybe intense meditation um so everybody sort of develops it in different ways i also want to say that the more you know yourself the more i don't want to say the more work you do because i don't like to call it work i don't like to say that but the more that you develop yourself and understand yourself and commit to understanding who you are as a person so for example you know i'm always an angry person and you just go through your life i'm always an angry person it's who i am likely you may be a little bit close to evolving from that because the the, the fact is you can evolve from an angry person you can evolve from being a sad person you can evolve so when we understand ourselves more and we start to develop ourselves and we start to evolve past our seemingly limitations we also get to know what 
it is what what it feels like when I'm sad, when I'm angry. Is this it come? Oh, I'm I'm being angry right now. So likely that's not the intuition coming through. Or I'm really really attached to this. I'm I'm being obsessive over this person, for example. And you know that okay, I'm I'm aware that I'm being obsessive here. I need a break or I need to take a time out. So the more you get to know yourself, your patterns, um, you know, your limitations, the more that you get to understand that it's your intuition coming through and not somebody else's energy or somebody else's influence or your emotions. So I would also add that. So again, for you, um, there's multiple ways. Um, yeah, so I'll leave that there. Next question, can you give an example of our intuition speaking to us? Yes, like I mentioned, uh, it comes in quick, soft, and subtle. Generally speaking, sometimes it's a little bit more um, in your face. But um, like I said, you can be driving your car and all of a sudden you'll get a random thought, something that I wondered about this a long time back. You know, I, ha I had this question three months ago. Now, all of a sudden, I'm, I'm receiving some information about it. That's strange because I wasn't thinking about it. I could say that that could tend to be your intuition coming through. Um, another way is that you really have uh, a pressing question and you keep asking, 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 higher God, praying about it, and it's not coming through. Let it go. Just surrender. Just stop trying to figure out the answer. And again, when you can be walking into the mall, or walking your dog, all of a sudden, you're going to have a, a stream of thought that will come in subtly, but sort of quickly. And that's usually what we refer to the intuition coming through. It's not always like that, because as you develop it more and more, and it depends on what you're asking or what you need to decide upon. Again, with uh, highly emotionally charged things, then it will have to intercept. Your intuition has to intercept that emotional sort of landscape of yours. But um, in other circumstances, for example, I'm just trying to uh, think of examples to give you. In other circumstances, when the, when the outcome is not super, you're not super emotionally charged, the outcome, you, you get a sense of it. You know, you get a sense of it. And uh, again, it comes back to knowing yourself and developing the trust for yourself. When you get to know yourself better and you develop the trust for yourself better, you'll be able to understand that intuition speaking to you. Um, yeah. Uh, by tap, next question. There's a whole bunch. I'm going to, I want to get to them and I, I, I do want to talk to you about some other stuff. So how can you, okay. By tapping intuition, can it cause... Okay, so I, I will say it out loud. Um, by tapping into your intuition, can it cause external signs? I attended a 10-day meditation course, sitting in silence for 10 days. First time ever doing meditation. On the last day of the course, I broke out in hives. Was this my intuition telling me something? Um, I, I would call that more of a, a, a release. Something was releasing from you. You know, your physical body was responding to those whatever occurred for you in those 10 days. So can you say my intuition is trying to tell me something through these highs and now I need to figure out what it is? You can, but based on your actions before that happened, you were going through a, a process and 10 day meditation, silent meditations retreat are quite intense. They're quite purging. Um, and so I would say that's part of, you can call it the a mental, emotional, energetic detox process. Um, your body is always talking to you, always, and we, we tend to ignore it. Um, and so, yes, to, in a certain way, our intuition, because our intuition is the higher, it's our higher wisdom, it's our wise one, it's the all-knowing one. Our bodies are wise. There, there has that all knowing. So, there's a couple of things going on in, in, in your question that I can say more of, but um, but yeah, I, I would say it's more you're detoxing something, which of course is 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 part of your wise one talking to you, right? Something that you're needing to detox is coming through you. So, so yeah, if you have more questions about that, you can always reach out to me. Um, 
personally here at the center. Could our dreams also be a form of intuition? Absolutely. Um, this is actually how it began for me when I was a very young child. I used to have dreams and then I would get up in the morning and I would tell my mother that this would happen or this is happening or this happened and she of course would say you know you're just dreaming it's just a child and then you know the next day or the day after she would find out exactly what I mentioned that were happening in my dreams so absolutely we call them prophetic dreams which are dreams are telltale we can see things happening in the dream space so absolutely yes can it just help with manifestation the all famous word manifestation um so that question yes basic plain answer yes um but i would again um if you want to elaborate on that so the feeling the next question so the feeling that intuition gives you is more positive in the sense that it it gives you hope trust sense um Yes and no. So the question is, so the feeling that intuition gives you is more positive in the sense that it gives you hope, trust, sense of divine, and overthinking would feel more anxious and negative, etc. Is that correct? I would say yes and no, because sometimes the intuition comes in and it's not something that we necessarily want to hear. For example, I moving houses. Let's say you love the house you're in, but something is uh, needing you to move out, or um, you have a choice to make about, a, let's say, a house that you're living in. Maybe what's best for you or your intuition is going to tell you to leave your house, but what you really want to do is stay. You know, let's say you have a leakage or mold that comes, and your intuition is saying, get out, sell the house, uh, if it's a rental, get out of the house, go rent something else, but you want to stay. So that intuition is a little bit sort of um, coming in, not really a warning, but calling you to do something else, but your emotions are saying no. So you can perceive moving out of your house as something, a negative thought, because it's causing you a little bit of uh, anxiety or discomfort. So not completely um, exactly, but what I meant to say more positive, it comes in just subtly. It's a subtle energy that comes in and it's more neutral. The energy that comes is a neutral, but the way we attach or our relation or um, the way our relationship is to that energy coming in can have quote unquote positive or negative emotions, different emotions attached to it. So the information, intuition is neutral, but it's the way we relate to it or connect to it that can have quote unquote, more positive or negative uh, feelings towards it. Um, what is the, there's a lot of questions, guys. I'm, I don't think I'll be able to get to all of them, but I'm gonna try. Um, what is the method for an OCT fighter to separate intuition from anxiety? Yeah. So I would say for you that the OCD, so the question is, what is the method for an OCD fighter to separate intuition from anxiety? So I want to go back to what I was saying in the beginning when, when I was saying that our intuition is here and all that layers of thoughts and stuff is around the intuition. So at the moment, the OCD is kind of hovering around intuition. It's, it's, it's like the thick layer around the intuition. And yes, it is quite difficult um, it is quite difficult to hear, but even with OCD, 100% you can connect to your intuition. Now, I can't completely get into it, um, but again, if you want to connect to me um, through the center, you know, we can, we can talk about that. But I would want to say just because you have OCD is, doesn't mean that you cannot connect to or listen to your intuition at all that is a false completely you can still however yes there is a, a little bit more uh, of a challenge because it's, it's really sort of uh, muffling it up let's call it muffling it up so you you can't really hear it because it might feel like intuition but then it's not um so yeah we can we can talk about that if you want we I, i'm always available to talk more about that um And you also asked about PTSD, the same thing, OCD. So I would, I would really, like I said before, the more that we develop ourselves and evolve ourselves, and I can call it healing, we can call that healing if we want to, um, and get to know ourselves, the more that we make space 
for that intuition to flow more freely. So I would invite you to continue, you know, your healing journey. You know, we're all on a healing journey. And perhaps at the moment in your life, OCD and PTSD is the, the piece where you are being invited to heal at this moment in your life on the journey. I used to have PTSD as well. And, you know, I don't anymore, you know, and when I had my PTSD, no, my intuition wasn't clear. I, I didn't even care about intuition. It wasn't even about that. It, I was so in the grips of the PTSD, but as I healed and developed and evolved from that, then, you know, and I had, and my intuition was very, um, I was very connected to my intuition prior to the PTSD. And then some event happened and I had the PTSD. So it's always there. Just remember that intuition is never something that can ever go away from you. It's really just more of releasing some of the fluff, I would call, you know, um, surrounding it, you know? So, so yeah, um, I'm going to take probably, okay, there's one last question. Um, okay, it's not, I have been working on Oh, okay. Okay. So you just made a comment. Okay. Um, well, I felt that was a marathon, but I'm happy. I love questions. I love, love questions. And um, I'm happy that you guys are so curious and that you're asking all these questions. And yes, we do have to end soon, but I want to say that next Wednesday, same time, I believe, I'm going to be doing a little uh, practice session. So I do teach, so I am clairvoyant, I do give readings, but I also teach a course called clairvoyant training. And this is one of the ways that I deeply developed my intuition in the sense of this is when I started to really trust myself and really um, develop the confidence, not just for my intuition, but also in my life. And so I do teach what we call clairvoyant training, which is a training that helps you develop your clairvoyant abilities, which is the psychic information that comes through or the intuitive information that comes through the, um, uh, the seeing sense. And um, it is a four day training that doesn't only train you how to read, energy, but it, it really helps you develop an understanding of, number one, your own energy, how you, how you are in relationship to your own energy, other people's energies, how you are in relationship to their energies, what is other people's energies and what is your energies. It will give, it will, I will, it gives tools on how to separate your energies from others. I don't like to use the word protect, but everybody likes that word, how to protect your energies from other energies. I, I like to call it more contain your energies. Um, and then it will help you start to give your own self mini psychic readings or mini clairvoyant readings where you start to ask questions for yourself and receive information. Now, again, it's practice. And then you can learn how to give other people readings. And this is where I wanna say, is the gem, it's one of the gems and one of my gems of how I developed, I deeply developed my intuition and my clairvoyance, et cetera, is by giving other people's, other people readings. Um, why? Because you receive information and you start to say that information. And a lot of times they give you, they give you confirmation that starts to come back. And what happens is that you start to sit in the reading space. We open sacred space, which is the divine space, you can call it which is the space where your intuition flows through. So as you start to learn how to give readings for other people, energy readings or psychic readings, you can call interchange them at the moment, you start, you sit in that space, you sit in that space and you start to get comfortable in that space and develop a relationship to that space. It becomes a knowing space for you. And as you sit more and more in that reading space in your daily life, you start to connect to that space um, in more, I would say, quicker ways and more natural ways. You, you start to understand the difference between everything you've been asking me about feelings, anxiety, and that space, that sacred space. And that's the space where intuition comes in. There's a lot of other things that happen in this course, but I don't have time to kind of go through them, but I will talk more specifically about the course next, um, next class. And, um, and yeah, I've been doing that here for the past, I think, four, four and a half years. I love it. Um, we always have fun. Everybody who comes into the class comes in, a lot of them, not everybody, with a lot of doubts. And everyone who finishes the course leaves with um, 
a lot more trust and understanding and, and so much that comes out of it. And um, perhaps next week, I might get someone on here from one of the classes to give a little, um, ex you know, just a little talk on how her experience was. So I might do that next week. So if you guys are interested next week, Wednesday, 8 p.m., we'll do, I'll talk about clairvoyant training a little bit more. I will give some exercises on, uh, and then we can do maybe a little bit of practice and then you can hear from someone who's taken the course. Again, this is one way if you're interested in developing your intuition, if you're interested in understanding more about energy and other people's energy and how you relate to the world energetically, it may be something you're interested in. If not, that's totally fine. You can come and practice and have fun and um, it'll be a little bit more interactive next week. Um, and we'll do as much as we can in an hour. So um, I think that's it for this evening. Are we able to do the class online? Yes. Anybody who's not here and would like to do the class online, yes, we can do that. I just need to know in advance because I, I prepare a little, a little bit differently for having an online, but absolutely, um, you don't need to be in person to do the class. If there's no hands-on anything, we do it through, um, you know, through the, through the video. So, so that's perfectly fine. But, uh, but yeah, I, I would like to just know in advance, um, not the day of. So let us know. Uh, I will have to let you all go. I wish I could see all your faces and see you in class. And uh, yeah, it was really fun, guys. I know I'm, it was just a monologue, but I feel your energy coming in from the questions. So it's very beautiful. Thank you, everybody, everybody for um, joining tonight. And I hope to see you next Wednesday and, you know, maybe for the class or for anything else. Okay. Bye, everybody. <laughs>